Namaskar and welcome to Namaste 2020, brought to you by the Center for Soft Power in collaboration with ICCR and SVSA deemed to be university. Swagatam. We are starting this morning with a session on the colors of Rama. Rama is our great hero, somebody that has lived on the earthly firmament and lived the life of a man. And today we have a very wonderful person, absolutely apt for this topic, to share her thoughts with us. Welcome to you, Madam uh, Srimati Vishaka Hari. Vishaka Hari is a practitioner of the ancient form of art called Harikatha or Katha Kirtanam. Herein she weaves beautiful stories of value and wisdom interspersed with mellifluous songs of yesteryear, great composers. Her themes are varied and are generally from our great epics and Puranas, like the Ramayana and the Srimad Bhagavata Puranam. She presents Harikatha in Tamil and English, and the songs are all from South Indian languages, Hindi and Sanskrit too. Her gurus are Srimati Lalgudi Ji Jairaman, the great violin maestro for music, and Sri Krishna Premi Swamigal, and Sri R. Hari for Katha. We look forward to a most enriching and enlivening morning today. Just yesterday, we celebrated Ganesha, and today we are looking at Lord Rama. And they always say that whenever Rama is spoken about, Hanuman is always present. So my obeisance to Anjaneya. Over to you, Vidushi Vishaka Hariji. Hare Krishna to one and all. Just start with a prayer song. Prayer Shloka on Sri Rama. Rama, yeah. Rama, Vajraya. Rama, Chandraya, Vedasi. Raghunathaya, Nathaya, Sita, Pataye, Namaha. Ramaya Rama Badraya, Rama Chandraya Vedase, Raguna Thaya Nathaya, Sita Ya Pathaye Namaha. At the outset, very, very happy to be part of Namaste 2020, this uh, virtual global Utsap, celebrating India's soft power. Ayurveda, Sanskrit, yoga, and all the beautiful forms of art, especially Sanskritam. And uh, in fact, I've always believed, and it is the truth, that through soft power, India has been a superpower. Soft power, through soft power, a superpower. So, Definitely, I always believe that India will become a superpower through the soft power once again. India, she has never fought battles or wars from her side to annex, conquer kingdoms. But through her soft power like this Ayurveda, yoga, Sanskritam, music and dance and 64 art forms, India has always been the supreme nation throughout the world. So that um was just a small point that i wanted to make because this is being organized by the center for soft power for indian soft power so my topic today is colors of rama rama for all nations and the myriad hues of sri rama so i just did a small slide to start this presentation on colors of rama nirmalaji powerpoint slide one so talking about the different colors of Rama, the myriad hues of Rama, Rama for all nations. Rama is a beautiful personality, a concept, and his myriad hues and colors are so 
beautiful and you can just see when the colors when two traits get mixed with each other the beauty the color combination itself changes and it becomes more beautiful and that is very true with sri rama rama is just not a person he is a concept ramo vigrahavan dharmaha says sri valmiki he says he tells uh, mari maricha maricha tells ravana when ravana wants to just assassinate and uh, annihilate rama maricha tells ravana you cannot take away rama from this world because rama is not a person he is a concept ramo vigrahavan dharmaha wherever there is dharma there is rama and that is why straight away when i was given this theme rama for all nations immediately i was reminded of this very first question that valmiki raised to sage narada when uh, valmiki met narada immediately he said can there be a single person a single hero a typical ideal hero for all nations can there be one single hero for all nations konvasmen sampradam loke i want to see that person right now meet that person hear about that person konvasmen sampradam konvasmen sampratam loke gunavan kascha virya varne dharma yascha krita yascha satya vakyo dridavretah right in this world is there a universal hero that is what he asks so yes there is a hero for all nations the next slide nirmala ji there is a hero for all nations today we can see different versions of ramayana so many different versions of ramayana throughout the world in the thai there is this rama ki cambodia there is this riyanka laos there is fra lak fra lam all these are ramayana texts all these are ramayana texts in japan hobutsu shu shambho ekotoba and ramayan shu this is a ramayan indonesia kakavan ramayan philippines this is maharadiya lavana all this is ramayana written in their language in burma in burmese ramayana is yamazatao and i can go on and on yeah china liu du ji jing there is this mongolian ramayana russian ramayana and of course many many translations of ramayan many 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 translations of ramayan so all through these uh, european nations have different ramayan german ramayan french ramayan in fact once when i visited chitrakoot uh 20 years back i was really surprised to see a beautiful museum called ram mandir and inside that ram mandir there were almost 345 different versions of rama of ramayana not only as texts there was the french ramayana italian text mongolian russian european countries nations ramayana and of course riyamka rankin ramayan show fra lak fra lam all these were placed as exhibits in ram mandir and behind the wall in the walls behind the texts on the walls we could see the paintings and different dances and different art forms that have evolved have inspired have been inspired from the ramayan so is there a doubt at all that rama exists for all nations going back to valmiki's question if there should be a hero for all nations how should he be kon vasmin sampratam loke ko kaha who is the real universal hero loke of the whole world gunavan he should be filled with virtues to be considered as a real supreme hero for all nations gunavan completely filled with virtues only then he can be considered as a hero of all nations there is ramayana in so many different versions why does cambodia need ramayana why does thailand need ramayana why do burma burmese people need ramayana why do chinese and japanese and 
the uh, Russians need Ramayana because Rama is the universal concept of truth and dharma and righteousness. Whether the person is an American or an Australian or a Russian, definitely he or she would expect certain virtues of a typical ideal hero. And that is what Valmiki says. He must be Gunavan Kastaviryavane. That typical ideal hero must be a Gunavan filled with virtues. He must be valorous. The hero must be really heroic. There is no he hero without heroism. So, Viryavane, I need to know who is heroic. Dharma gesture, knower of Dharma. Kritagnya he should be full of latitude. He should be Satyavakyo Dridavrataha. He should be a complete, total person of principles. Respecting truth, speaking nothing but the truth, Dridavrataha means principal person. His character must be blemishless, completely filled with chastity and loyalty. We talk of chastity for women, a chaste man. Rama is a typical example. Sarvabhuteshu kohitaha. He must think of the welfare of the whole universe. He must not be thinking of himself all the time. Vidwan Kaha. He must be an expert Vidwan and he must be efficient enough. Kashyika Priyadarshanaha. He must be really handsome to look at, charismatic to look at. And immediately Naradji says, wait, 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 wait a second. You're going on and on and on and on. It's very difficult to see such a universal hero for all nations. One person might be really heroic, but he might be using all this heroism towards terrorism. So then, what is the use? So here, he compares, he says, some person, some typical hero of a nation might be really bold, brave, courageous, but he might not be compassionate. So all these oxymoronic qualities must be combined in one. And that person should be the ruler. I told you right at the beginning, Rama is not a person. So even today we can have Rama Rajya. People want Rama Rajya. How can Rama Rajya be possible without Rama? Because Rama is a concept. Anybody who follows all these qualities of Rama and becomes a politician and rules the country, rules the nation, then that government becomes Rama Rajya. That government becomes total Rama Rajya in the sense all the citizens are loved and the citizens love the president or the prime minister of the nation. So Rama Rajya depends on Rama and Rama the qualities are being expounded by Naraji in the form of Sankshepa Ramayana. But he says, to find the universal hero, Bhakavo Shaiva, Yetvaya Kirti Taguna, it's very, very difficult to find so many qualities in one person. But we are fortunate that we do have this person. So why are we talking of this person, Ramo, Ramo, Ramayiti, Prajanama Bhavankataha? Ramo, Ramo, Rama iti prajana mabhavan kataha. The whole world was echoing the name of Rama. And has it stopped? No. The echo has not faded away. In fact, the echo has become louder and louder and clearer and clearer. Means Rama exists now in the form of dharma. Whatever dharma we do, there is Rama in that dharma. That is why today, we have Rama for all nations. Wanted to do a typical presentation of how Brahma's boon to Valmiki. Brahma said, Yavat Tarsyan Tigrayaha, Saritas Chamahitale, Tavat Ramayana Katha Lokeshu Pracharishyati. As long as the mountains exist, as long as the lakes and the seas and the sun and the moon exist, Ramayana will exist in this world because. Everybody is in need of Rama Rajya. Every nation, not just India. America is in need of Rama Rajya. Australia is in need of Rama Rajya. 
Thailand, the Southeast Asian countries, the East Asian countries, European nations, all African nations, they're all in need of Ramarajya. And how is Ramarajya possible? If the president or the prime minister takes up, takes up the qualities of Rama as expounded in Ayodhya Kanda, Pratama Sarga, in the first Sarga of Ayodhya Kanda, Pratama Sarga, first Sarga, from I think the Shloka 9 to Shloka 30, it gives the qualities of a politician, of a ruler, and a human being. Of course, the, 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 the person who leads the government needs to be full of virtues as a human being right at the beginning and as a politician be, besides that. So he from Shloka 9 to Shloka 30, Valmiki goes on expounding the beautiful traits of Rama so that everybody can become 1% of Rama or 2% of Rama. And that is why we have these 300 and odd versions. In fact, there are thousands of versions, but 300 original versions of Ramayana. Let's go on to the slide number, uh, Thailand's Rama Keen. The video, Thailand's uh, Rama Keen. Nirmalaji? So, I wanted to just do a small glimpse of Rama for all nations. How Thailand's national epic is Ramayana. Many of us don't know. We keep, uh, in fact, protesting to even include Ramayana or Mahabharata in the syllabus for our students. But Thailand's national epic is Rama Keen. Rama Keen, this is one of the painting, paintings in Bangkok's temple, Wat Phriu. Thailand's students in school are taught Ramayana. It is a compulsory subject. Why? Because that has nothing to do with religion. It has everything to do with morality, moral science. Ramayana is a moral science. It is philosophical. It is an epic that teaches us how to live and how not to live. So Thailand's national epic, Rama Keen is a beautiful epic expounding Ramayana and here in Thailand, the kings, somebody uh, was uh, writing, we don't need Rama now, we need Rama Rajya now. You know something? The kings are named King Rama 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 in Thailand. Here in India, we are afraid because of the so-called secularism point. But there is nothing religious about Ramayana. Ramayana is a universal epic where Buddhists, Jainists, Muslims, Christians, everybody need Rama because everybody need truth. That person who is not in need of truth might say, I don't need Rama. I don't need the Ramayana because I don't believe in truth. But then his life, his or her life would be just hell. Because everybody needs truth. Everybody needs that kind of a heroism where the good wins over the evil. So in Thai is Ramakin. Ramakin means the glory of Rama. And this is Thailand's national epic. The kings are named King Rama 1, 2. And this is a masterpiece in Thai literature and art. This painting is at Wat Phra Phu at uh, Bangkok Temple where the walls are painted with uh, stories of Ramayan. And the next slide. There are other different forms which have been inspired by the Ramayana. Uh, this is Cambodian uh, Ramayana. Uh, this Cambodian Ramayana is Riyankar. Riyankar. Cambodian Ramayana. Again, why does Cambodia need Ramayana? We, talk, we are talking of, uh, I just told you now, Ramayana is not just a religious literature, it's a dharmic literature. Why do we need to connect religion with all our master literature pieces? This is a Dharmic literature where people believe in fidelity, justice, trust, loyalty, love. This love should exist among princes, among giants, among humans, among monkeys, among mermaids. And that is what Cambodian Ramayan says. Here, Cambodian Ramayan, you might have a doubt. There are so many Ramayans in so many nations. Is the story the same? It's almost similar, but of course the names, the dresses, the costumes, as you can see in Riyankar, the costumes, the clothes, 
the topography, the weapons that they use, all that is adapted to that particular nation. Otherwise, it is the basically the same story. In some Ramayans, there are different versions based on the culture adaptation. Here, Friya Ryam, Ryam is Ram. Friya Ryam marries Niang Seda. Seda is Sita. Friya Ryam marries Niang Seda, but not by not lifting the bow, by shooting arrows through a spinning wheel. So that's a that's a small point. He shoots arrows through a spinning wheel, and then uh, that becomes the challenge for Ryam. Ryam is Rama there. So the next slide. This is Angkor Wat's uh, one of the bas reliefs. There are many bas reliefs and many, many, of course, everybody knows that in uh, Angkor Wat. There are so many uh, evidences and beautiful art pieces artistically carved and painted at Angkor Wat. This is a bas relief. And the next one, there are dances and uh, music inspired, the Khan dance. In Cambodia, the Khan dance, is based on Ramayana. Many of the dance dramas in Cambodia is based on Ramayana. Yeah. And we go on to the next nation. So I, I just want to tell you that it's not just the literature, it's the artistical expression, the dance, the music, the shadow puppetry. In fact, in uh, Wayang is a shadow puppetry in Thailand. Leather puppetry, shadow puppetry, all the artistic uh, expressions are influenced by the Ramayana. And the next one is Javanese Ramayana, Kakavin Ramayana. That's a beautiful Ramayana. Uh, that's a manuscript, a, a very old manuscript of Kakavin Ramayana. That is in Java. And uh, Javanese Ramayana, Kakavin Ramayana, is a very uh, interesting Ramayana. Again, this is uh, called Kakavin Ramayana because the Chandas, like what we say in Sanskrit, the Anushtuk Chandas, right? Here it is the Kakavin Chandis, Kakavin meter. It's again inspired by Sanskrit poetry. But uh, I, as I told you, there are so many uh, puppetry shows and uh, in the Indonesian culture, which are uh, inspired by this Ramayana. And there is this orchestra which goes on like Indian Yakshagana, like what we do in Karnataka, Andhra, Manitou, Badu, the Melas, no, from midnight to dawn. There is something like Indian Yakshagana and Bhagavata Mela, the Kakavin Rama and Vayan puppetry, as well as the Khan Rama dance in uh, Thai, as well as in Java. It goes on throughout midnight, the Rama is being enacted. Why do you think it's all being done in different art forms? Because Rama is for all nations. Because we need Rama. Today we need Rama. Every nation needs Rama, not just India. America needs Rama, Australia needs Rama, Russia needs Rama at this point of time because we need to know what is right and what is wrong. And that literature, Ramayana is a literature which, te which teaches us what is right and what is wrong. Rama could have very well arrested his mother and father and crowned himself as the king, as many have done in the Mughal emperor uh, reign. If you look at it, they, uh, they will arrest their fathers they will put them into the jail and then crown themselves as kings. But Ramayana tells us that that is wrong. Every American or Australian parent, what do they expect of their children? That the children obey them, respect them, love them. If they need that, the typical example would be Rama because he goes on an exile to satisfy his stepmother, not even his mother. Today, children are not willing to satisfy their mothers. If the mother says, go and study or go and learn some composition of the Advaita Swami, they just, they retard back. But here is Rama, who prostrates at the feet of Kaikeri, his stepmother. So, there is this, uh, that, that is why all these nations need uh, Rama and more and more and more. And they are trying to portray this in the form of dances, music, drama, then comics, then stage plays, puppetry plays and so many other different art forms. There is this dance in uh, Java. The, can you show the Java ballet, Nirmalaji? The dance ballet in Java. Um, the, every time there is a ballet, Javanese ballet, they make it a point. In fact, I told you it's a, the Ramayana is a national epic in Thailand. In many of the Southeast Asian countries, Ramayana is the national epic. 
That is uh, one point to be noted. It's a national epic in many of the Southeast Asian countries. In Philippines too, there is this dance called single dance, singkil, singkil dance in Ph Philippines. And that is again from Ramayan. So you might be wondering, uh, there is this Buddhist impact in the Southeast Asian countries. So does the Buddhist literature have a Ramayan? Yes, you're right. Fra Lak, Fra Lam is the Buddhist Ramayan. Buddhist Ramayan is a very interesting one. I'll just make a point here. Lak is Lakshmana and Lam is Ramayana. Here in Buddhist Ramayana, there is no Ravana. <laughs> you might be wondering, if that's a very uh, interesting uh, point to note. There is no Ravana. Why no Ravana? Because Ahimsa Paramo Dharmaha is the Buddhist culture. You, you need not have a Ravan, but you do need a Rama. That is my point. You can have a Ramayana without Ravana, but you cannot have a Ramayana without Rama. So Rama should be there for all nations. But today there is Ravana for all nations. Where is the Rama for all nations? In the Buddhist Ramayana, there is no uh, Sita Apaharan because there is no Ravana. So what happens is uh, Rama becomes a Buddhist monk at the, uh, at the end. So this is Fra Lak and Fra Lam. This is the Buddhist Rama and Rama Pandita is uh, Rama. And he is considered as the previous incarnation of Buddha and Sita is considered as the incarnation of Yashodara. In the next one, the Jainas also have a Ramayana, Jaina Ramayana. There are many versions in Jaina Ramayana, many, many versions. Uh, here, I just gave you a script to show that in Jaina Ramayana, that is Ravana, but Rama does not kill Ravana. It is Lakshmana who kills Ravana. So your head is spinning huh? with too many versions. If we listen, listen to this lecture the second time, you might be uh, quite clear about it. That's why I wanted to present slides so that I don't confuse you. In the Buddhist literature, there is no Ravana. In the Jain, uh, Jain Ramayana, there is a Ravana, but it is Lakshmana who kills Ravana. Why? Because Rama is that enlightened soul. Here, Rama is the Jain monk who is totally sattvic. They believe that Ahimsa is Paramo Dharmaha. So the himsa part, the evil part has to be destroyed. So who does it? Lakshmana does it. And uh, they also believe that one day Ravana will also become a Jain Tirthankara. So there is a scope for every person, even the fallen souls, to go to the next level. So that is their culture. But again here, Rama, you need Rama. You can, you can do away with any character in Ramayana. In fact, as per Valmiki Ramayana, every character is very, very important. You cannot do away with anybody at all. In fact, you might be having a doubt. Oh, why do we need a Ravan at all? That is impractical. In today's world, do you think it's possible to have a world without Ravans at all? No, there are more Ravans than Ramas. So why does Rama in Valmiki Ramayana kill Ravana? He in fact gave Ravana a scope. There is always the good, there is always the evil in the world. I just, I'm just reiterating this point because you might, you should not think that, oh, maybe Valmiki had done a mistake by uh, making Rama kill Ravana. He could have, uh, maybe Ravana could have become a better soul. Rama did give an opportunity to Ravana even though he had create, committed the gravest of the grave mistakes. He did give an opportunity. Indrupoi Naleva is what Kamban says. You can go, come back again. If you just give back Sita, I don't need war. I need just peace. This is what Rama says. But Ravana is not willing to change. Only then he kills. But why do we need killing? Why is that violence? There you need to take Krishna's verse in Bhagavad Gita. Every killing is not considered as himsa. If the doctor takes a knife to do an operation, will you say that it is himsa? My guru Sri Sri Anna would always give this example. Can we be giving this lecture today without the military warrior standing at the border of our nation? Is that himsa? No. 
they are trying to establish ahimsa throughout the nation by protecting us from the evil so the valmiki ramayana is the of, is of the highest level the greatest deepest thoughts and the deepest philosophies so do you think he wouldn't have known the importance of ahimsa but this is where in aranya kanda rama rama says rama rajya is not something where uh, now nobody should take weapons at all there should be some people dharmyadi yuddha shreyonyat kshatriyasya na vidyate there should be kshatra dharma where the rulers take the weapons in order to establish peace throughout the nation so establishing ahimsa through himsa is the deepest philosophy dharma sukshma in uh, valmiki ramayana and uh, one more ramayana i wanted to show you this is going to come as a surprise for you this is the muslim ramayana the mapilla patte the mapilla patte is in the malabar uh, region there is the muslim ramayana also so muslims also need ramayana why because of the same concept from rama we can learn the dharma sukshma what not to do and what to do in this muslim songs this muslim ramayana is called mapilla part it is a collection of folklore muslim songs in colloquial mapilla dialect of malayalam it is mixed interspersed with arabic persian hindustani in the malabar region of kerala there ha- they have this mapilla ramayana there is the sikh version also in guru granth sahib the philosophy behind ramayana guru uh, guru gobind singh gives the philosophy behind ramayana the slides are over uh the slides are over nirmala ji you can just yeah so here in guru granth sahib ravana is the ego part sita is buddhi and rama is the inner soul and lakshman is the man manas so every version every religion they try to bring out their own ideas in fact i'm reminded of this uh, french translators verse uh, a french version of valmiki's ramayana was given some years back the french ramayana uh, from valmiki's ramayana seven books of uh, french translation was done by a translator it was released by a french foreign minister i if i remember some years back and he said in his uh, launch when the book was launched he said you might be wondering what what a french foreign minister has got to do with ramayana but i tell you rama rama has universal appeal and ramayana has universal appeal ramayana is not a particular religious literature it it is the wisdom that inspires all good things and success it is the wisdom that inspires the human being to move towards divinity the french foreign minister said that at the launch it is a literature which deals with human emotions anybody sitting there in australia or in russia or in mongolia every woman would ex- expect that her husband loves truly uh, her, her husband loves her and uh, the parents will expect the children to love them the, uh, the the citizens will expect the rulers to really love the citizens and to work for the welfare of the citizens all these put together is rama so here the french minister says ramayana is the wisdom that deals with the goals of human life dharma artha kama moksha and it has a philosophical point it is the root of culture so why did i take this point because i i told you i'm reminded of the french translator i think it was a female lady who did the translation she said i still remember the words every time i read the ramayana every shloka brings to me a new meaning she said these words the french lady said these words each time i read the ramayana it brings every shloka every verse brings to me a new meaning so i wanted to do this translation of the entire valmiki ramayana into french and thus we have so many translations i'm just doing the original versions there are so many hundreds and thousands of translations of valmiki's ramayana and other ramayana into different languages 
in Italy, it seems there are houses which have paintings of two people uh, standing with a bow and arrow and a lady walking in between. Who else than Rama, Sita and Lakshmana? Always Sita walks in between Rama and Lakshmana. This is in Italy. So I can go on and on and on like this. So basically, you can see that Rama is there for all nations. This is a truth, whether you like it or not. People love it. The Thai people, the Cambodian people, the Laois people, the Javanese people, the Sumatra Islands, Burmese people. Yamayana is Ramayana in Burma. Yamayana, Yama, the Rama becomes Yama in Burma. So that is also the national epic of Burma. So we must in fact take so much of pride and uh, so much of happiness in saying that India's greatest contribution to the world is our Ramayana, which has become the whole world's Ramayana. And uh, that is in fact something that we really need to cherish. In Malaysia, we have Hikai Seri Rama, the Malay version of the Ramayana. Uh, so this, I, can, I, I, I just told you I can go on and on and on, but I just wanted to give you a glimpse how so many paintings in Italy, so many uh, legends in uh, Russia, among the Kalmyk people of Russia, they trace their roots to Mongolia. So Mongolians also had this epic that closely resembles Ramayana. So beautifully, Rama is celebrated throughout the world. Of course, in India, there are so many versions uh, in Ramayana and so many different, I can give you uh, almost 40 to 50 minimum uh, names of Ramayana, not only in Sanskrit, not only Valmiki's Ramayana, I can uh, give you the names in uh, Tamil Ramayana, Kamban, then Telugu, Godabuddha Reddy's Ramayana, then Assamese, Madhava Khandali, you know, Uriya, Vilanka Ramayana, Jagmohan Ramayana, Uriya, Telugu, there is this Molla Ramayana, she was a potter woman who wrote Ramayana in Telugu. And Kannada, of course, Narakari Ramayana, Torave Ramayana, Yeltachins, Malayala Ramayana, Avadhi Ramayana, and Tulisidas, Marathi Ramayana, Ekanath, Samartha Ramdas is written in Marathi, then uh, so Bhushundi Ramayana in Samskrita, Vishwanath Kuntia in Oriya, Bhanabukta in, in uh, Nepali, Giridhar in Gujarati, Prakasha Ram in Kashmiri, Chandaja in Maithili, Sridhar Swami in Marathi. You can go on and on and on in for Indian regional languages. Because the theme was Rama for all nations, I took the other nations aspect. Otherwise, there are so many uh, Indian regional languages too. But what does all of this really mean to us? Rama is a concept to be celebrated and followed, just not celebrated. We celebrated this uh, August 5th Bhumi Puja. Why do we need a temple for a person who existed so many years back? Some people ask. Again, come to the same point. He's not a person, he's a concept. If we are building a temple for Rama, it means that we are building a temple for truth. We are building a temple for Dharma and we are reiterating the fact that all of us need to follow the ideals of Rama. That is why Tyagaraja Swami said, you are an ocean of virtues, Rama. So why do I need to sing about you after so many thousands of years? Because I believe that I can imbibe at least 1% of your ocean of virtues. At least 1% of your virtues, if I can imbibe, it is going to really do me so much good. So I think with that, we could uh, move on to the interactive session. And Rama, we are, we are truly to be proud to say that he belongs to everybody. Every beautiful soul in this world can cherish, can adore, can admire Rama, can try to become Rama. At least 1% of Rama, 10% of Rama, 20% of Rama. And Rama, yeah, Rama, Bhadraya. Rama Chandra Yavedha Se Raghunathaya Nathaya 
Any questions? Thank you so much, uh, ma'am, for this lovely uh, session. I think the sound of uh, your words will linger in our minds for a long time. Uh, if I may, can I ask you a question? I think uh, you're the yeah. person bold enough who will be able to give us a very convincing uh, reply. Uh, you, you mentioned that you know this uh, uh, concept of Sri Rama is um, not about religion. So uh, in, in the current situation in the world and uh, within India itself, uh, why, why is, it, is it required for us to be hesitant about saying that Sri Rama uh, embodies everything that is the best about uh, Hindu Dharma and Sanatana Dharma? Is it necessary for um, soft power in some fields like uh, Ayurveda or yoga or uh, uh, even our bhakti to be disassociated with Hinduism for it to be accepted worldwide? Well, actually speaking, Aparna Sridharji, worldwide there is a lot of acceptance for the uh, Hindu tradition, the Indian tradition. But in India, very unfortunately, only in India, in fact, I should say, Americans are more open to all that is, which is uh, Hinduism, and they want to, in fact, appreciate Americans, Australians, Europeans, all over the world. We need not disassociate anything from the Sanatana Dharmic tradition. But in India, anything becomes acceptable only if you disassociate it with the Sanatana Dharmic tradition, unfortunately because of the pseudo-secularism concept. I can uh, tell this boldly, because anything which is Indian, nobody takes pride and glory in the Indian tradition at all today. We are still foreigners, we are still Westerners in our mind. Do you think people will go on the streets, anything which is Western, right from the outfits, right from the food that you eat. If you eat an idli sambar, you're considered uncivilized. You, if you eat a pizza or a, or a burger, you're considered as a fashionable person. This particular very pathetic opinion still, in fact, it's growing and it's not diminishing. And I think it's high time Indians take pride in their own culture and tradition. The whole world is celebrating India. Why not the Indians? This is my point. Thank you so much. There is a one person who is asking, uh, uh, from now on, how will Ram Rajya start again? Maybe we can uh, take that one last question. Thank you. Yeah, sure. From now on, how will Ram Rajya start? As I told you, Ram Rajya is a Rajya centered on Dharma. Ram Rajya, many people associate it again with religion. Ram Rajya means a Rajya, a government centered or a centered focal point is around dharma, dharmic goals, around all the righteous paths. So it truly depends on yata raja tata prajaha. Truly, completely depends on the head, whoever becomes the prime minister or the president, the ministers, the MLAs, all of them, if they follow the dharmic path, definitely the citizens are going to follow the dharmic path because they will be uh, inspired. In fact, we, we are looking out for leaders who are, who can be inspired, inspire us to, who can inspire us to move towards that Rama Rajya, towards that Dharmic Rajya. And uh, soon I definitely believe that that is going to happen. It's all uh, in the mind. It is going to happen and it is happening right now. It is happening right now. Thank you so much, Vishakha ji, and uh, also to Nirmala ji for uh, assisting you. We've had a lovely morning. Thank you for joining us and for accepting our invitation at such short notice. We are totally indebted to you. No. We will now uh, have a short clip, a dance clip by uh, Srimati Rukmini Vijay Kumar. She's a very young but uh, brilliant uh, Bharatanatyam dancer. This is a dance that uh, she did 
for uh, Pujya uh, Dayanand Saraswati ji's uh, birth anniversary, which comes on August 15th. And she did it for AIM for Seva and has kindly shared it with us. Koti ji, please could you play? Sri Ramachandra Kripalo Bajamana Arana Bhava Paya Daruma Sri Ramachandra Kripalo Bajamana Arana Bhava Paya Daruma Bhava Kanjalo Chana Kanjamukhara Kanjapala Kanjaruma Bhava Kanjalo Chana Kanjamukhara
uh, whenever uh, Indic Academy or the Center for Soft Power needs anything to do with music, we rush to Dr. Rama Kaushalya and Tilay She uh, She is the former principal of the Tiruvayaru School of Music, as well as is a senior member of Music Academy in Chennai and uh, director of Marubu Foundation. So when we asked her uh, for our session, our next session, chant and paint for uh, her to chant and for us to paint, uh, she recommended uh, her very close friend and a very senior musician, Dr. S. Vijaya Jaya. So we are very privileged to have with us uh, Dr. S. Vijaya Jaya, who is the head and associate professor in the Department of Carnatic Music, PSG, CAS. She has conducted lecture demonstrations of the musical aspects in Prahlada Charitramu of uh, Melatur Bhagavata Mela in Indian music and Indian music seminars uh, conducted by the Department of uh, Music, PSG College of Arts and Science in Coimbatore. Uh, she has also done a non-stop 12-hour uh, Ramanama Akhandam in her college, where she says uh, uh, students from all uh, walks and faiths uh, did a continuous chanting of Ramanama from 6 a.m. in the morning to 6 p.m. So she, she will be uh, leading this uh, session with uh, chanting of Ramanama in different Karnatic ragas. And also, since the session is called The Colors of Sri Rama, we have distributed three uh, pictures uh, from three different form, uh, Indian art forms. We request you to color as, as we can. Welcome to the session, Dr. Vijaya and her student. Thank you. Namaste. I'm Dr. Vijaya. Thank you for giving me a wonderful opportunity to recite Ramanama in different colors of Raga here. This is the mantra, is a royal road to attain moksha. So I really very happy and thanks to my professor. I am a disciple of Sri Ramakausalya Madam and also organizer and Indika to everybody. I thank you very much for the opportunity. Here, Sri Archana Sri, one of my students, will also accompany with me here to recite Ramanama. Thank you so much. In my program, I taken the different lyrics from different languages, Asya Virutam, from various composers like uh, Tyagaraja, Purandara Dasa, and Kambar, everybody taken Asya Virutam in various ragas followed by a Ramanama. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ram, 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 Ram,
Dr. Vijaya and your disciple. It was a lovely morning, and I hope our every breath uh, continues to chant his name always. Uh, it was a wonderful idea to uh, choose Ramanama, and I think you gave us a small, uh, gave me a small explanation as to why you chose yes. Ramanama and not Sri Rama or Jai Rama. Could you just uh, give us two two seconds of explanation as to why you chose? Why is Ramanama most important? Ramanama itself is a great Nama. Yes. This is combined with Sri Ra and there is a Akshara Mad Ma is taken from Namashivaya Ma. So we combine with Ra and Ma both gives the unity and Shaivism and Vaishnavism here also. So in my college, they are insisting me to take only Rama because it gives entire power to us so that we are choosing this Sri Rama. Sri means Lakshmi, Sita means Lakshmi. So Rama itself gives everything to us, wealth, health, everything. So we are taking only the Rama Nama here to recite in different ragas. It is the experimental training to my students in my college also. They are in beginning stage. They learn the more ragas through this Ramanama. I'm so happy in even the learners, the beginner level, they are at least introduced more ragas through this Ramanama so that I'm so happy to take Ramanama in various ragas also. Thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for yeah. your time and for giving us this wonderful session. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you to my professor Rama Kaushalya and also the Indika and Aparnaji. Thank you so much to taking this wonderful opportunity to in morning time. We are, I'm thinking about always Rama for past one week. Also, that's uh, get an opportunity to visit the Ramanama here. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Namaskar. We now move on to our uh, next session, which will be a recorded session by one of uh, India's probably youngest uh, Harikatha exponent. Uh, she is uh, Varsha Bhuvaneshwari who started learning Harikatha at the age of six from Harikatha legend Kalaimani late Tanjaur T.R. Kamala Murthy and had her Arangetram at the age of seven in 2010. Following this, she was featured regularly in Bhakti channel of uh, Star Vijaya TV. She has performed in many sabhas and uh, Predominantly, she delivers her Harikatha in uh, Tamil, but we asked her, requested her to do this for our audience worldwide in English, and she has uh, kindly consented. Uh, Koti Garu, please could you play the video? Nama Parvati Pataye, Hara Hara Mahadeva, Bola Pundali Kavarade, Hari Vital Anchaneya Swami Ki Jai Sadgurunath Maharajiki Jai Ramachandram Bajare Manasa Ramachandram Bajare Manasa Ramachandram Bajare Manasa Ramachandram Bajare Manasa Ramachandram Bajare hey, hey. Shamala Deng Sri Saketa Deepa Shamala Deng Sri Saketa Deepa 
கோமள பதயுக காஞ்சன சாப கோமள பதயுக காஞ்சன சாப ரமச்சந்திரம் பஜரே மானச ராமச்சந்திரம் பஜரே மானச ராமச்சந்திரம் பஜரே நத்த மங்கள கர நித்தியானந்த நத்த மங்கள கர நித்தியானந்த நாரத முகநுத நீரஜாசன ஸ்ரீ நாரத முகநுத நீரஜாசன ஸ்ரீ ராமச்சந்திரம் பஜரே மானச ராமச்சந்திரம் பஜரே மானச ராமச்சந்திரம் பஜரே ஏ ஸ்ரீயப்பதி பிங் தி கான்சர்ட் ஆஃப் தி மோஸ்ட் பெனவலண்ட் அண்ட் பியூட்டிஃபுல் காட் இஸ் மகாலக்ஷ்மி பகவான் ஹூஸ் தி சுப்ரீம் பர்சனாலிட்டி ஆஃப் காட் ஹெட் இஸ் ரெஃபர்ட் திஸ் வே எஸ்பெஷலி இன் தி ஹரிகத சம்பிரதாய நோன் டு பி தி பெஸ்ட் ஓவர் மெயின்டெய்னர் அண்ட் தி இன்டிஸ்ட்ரக்டபிள் லார்ட் ஹீ இஸ் த ஒன் இன் ஹூம் ஆல் பீங்ஸ் டுவெல் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ தி ஒன் ஹூ டுவெல்ஸ் இன் ஆல் பீங்ஸ் this is what is denoted by the first two names of from vishnu sasanamam vishwam and vishnu vishwam means the one in all and vishnu gives the meaning that he is the one who remains as all in one the one who pervades into both the biotic and the abiotic components in the planet all his incarnations or avataras as mahavishnu is known for his dasha avataram the incarnations are taken in order to destroy to annihilate to obliterate adharma and to restore dharma this is also mentioned in the bhagavad gita peet the narasimha avataram that was taken all of a sudden to save his to rescue his five year old devotee or the wondrous episode of vamana or the terrifying parashurama avatar if we observe each incarnation has its own unique purpose which is carried out beautifully and flawlessly while we read texts like bhagavatam padma puranam which discuss in detail some of the unknown incarnations like kapila avataram naranarayan avataram which we may not know as they don't come in the dasha avataram dasha avataram is just a top 10 it doesn't end there this striking truth comes to our notice that whenever lord takes an incarnation he conforms to all the constraint it demands without asking for any concession on the grounds of his supremacy and rama avatara stands out to be a classic example it exemplifies this quality of lord that is why saint composer nada yogi tyagaraja swami was known for his exemplary devotion towards lord rama feels proud of his deity of worship and addresses mahavishnu he says you might have taken innumerable incarnations but never can your other incarnations equal my rama never can that happen because he says seeing people suffer as wanderers in the forest of material existence the lord having embodied as a human being epitomized the right conduct saying this he exhorts his mind oh my mind oh manasa even after knowing the compassionate heart of rama and even after reading about his generosity knowing about his kind heartedness why do you choose to remain so stubborn how could you do this this is this message is conveyed in the kriti called manavyalakim mm. 
कर्म कांड मता कृष्णु लई बाबा कर्म कांड मता कृष्णु लई बाबा गगन चारु लई काशी जंत का गगन चारु लई काशी जंत का कनी मानवा हा कनी मानवा अवतारुडे कनी मानवा अवतारुडे कनी तेजे नाटे गगन त्याग राजू कनी मानवा अवतारुडे कनी तेजे नाटे रडत त्याग राजू मन व्याल किम चरादटे मर्म मिल्ल दिल पेदने माना सामन व्याल किम इन संस्कृत जैसे धर्मो विग्रहवान राम है रामा वस धर्मा परसोनिफाइड एंड इवन तमिल अरत्तिन मूर्ति व्हेन दे टॉक अबाउट रामा परियर स्वामी सेस अरत्तिन मूर्ति बीट द ह्यूमिलिटी वाइल मीटिंग ग्रेट सेजेस like Vishwamitra, Agastya or remaining modest even after being highly acclaimed by Gautama and Vishwamitra for saving Ahalya from the deadly curse and it is also mentioned in the Ramayana, very shocking to read this. After relieving Ahalya of her curse, Rama has prostrated before the couple. While we read, we feel the opposite should have happened. It is Ahalya who should have clutched on to his feet for having relieved her that curse of which she was she was suffering from the days of yore this shows the humble and self effacing attitude of rama and most importantly the legendary obedience to his father's words and he is also described as a very empathetic person who understands comprehends to others feelings be it when visiting Shabari's hermitage or befriending Sugriva and most importantly, more than all, his mentality to accept Vibhishana, who he knew that is a member of the demon family, member from the demon family, brother of Ravana, just because he came with unconditional surrender. That is why வாழுவதில் தர்மம் அரசை யாழுவதில் தர்மம் தாய் தந்தையரை மதிப்பதில் தர்மம் வரியார் சுவாமிகள் கிட்ஸ் இமோஷனல் வின் ஹி ஸ்டார்ட்ஸ் நரேட்டிங் த எபிசோட்ஸ் ஆஃப் கம்பராமாயணம் டு சே சூசின்ட்லி ஸ்ரீ ராமாஸ் லைஃப் வாஸ் அ லைஃப் ஆஃப் ஸ்டெயின்லெஸ் பியூரிட்டி மேட்ச்லெஸ் சிம்ப்ளிசிட்டி ப்ரைஸ்வர்த்தி கண்டென்ட்மெண்ட் கமெண்டபிள் செல்ஃப் சாக்ரிஃபைஸ் அண்ட் ரிமார்க்கபிள் ரினவுன்சியேஷன் as i am asked to perform harikatha for 15 to 20 minutes on the episode of shri rama pattabhishegam i am used to do in tamil usually i do in tamil only but as english as a language that may appeal to a diverse larger indian audience i was asked to do in english and i will be summarizing and narrating this episode this very momentous episode from the vast epic with whatever little knowledge that i have acquired from my preceptors after ravana samhara and sita devi's agni pariksha where she proved her stainless virtue by an ordeal of fire rama along with his beloved brother and wife mounted on the pushpaka vimanam the aircraft the real car that ravana had won from the gods to vibhishna requested pleaded rama to stay for a few more days the epitome of righteousness refused saying that janani janma bhumischa swargadapi gariyasi it is my mother and motherland which is more important to me than the realm of heaven saying so even vibhishna was extremely anguished with the very thought of getting separated from rama so were the rakshasas so were the vanaras so everyone decided to board the flight and they all ascended the 
పుష్క పుష్పక విమానం అండ్ ఆన్ ది రికమెండేషన్ ఆఫ్ సీత ది ల్యాండెడ్ ఇన్ కిష్కింద అండ్ ది వానరా వైఫ్స్ వెర్ ఆల్సో అలౌడ్ టు అకంపెనీ ది వానరా వైఫ్స్ వెర్ టేకెన్ అలాంగ్ ఫర్ ది కారనేషన్ సెరమనీ యాజ్ ది ఎయిర్క్రాఫ్ట్ సోడ్ త్రూ ద స్కైస్ రామా స్టార్టెడ్ టు రీక్యాపిటులేట్ ఈచ్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీ ఇన్సిడెంట్ దట్ హ్యాపెండ్ ఎర్లియర్ అండ్ ద వన్ థింగ్ దట్ యాడెడ్ మోర్ కలర్ టు దిస్ సీన్ వాజ్ ద సీన్ విచ్ రామా వాజ్ డిస్క్రైబింగ్ ద ప్లేసెస్ అసోసియేటెడ్ విత్ ది సీన్ దట్ రామా వాజ్ డిస్క్రైబింగ్ రామా వాజ్ నరేటింగ్ can be viewed beneath if he is mentioning about kishkinda the happenings in kishkinda how he slew wali how wali was slain and how he placed sugriva on the throne kishkinda can be viewed under so he was pointing sita see this rock bound kishkinda with her mounted gilded town and this is the place this is rishimukha mount where i met hanuman where i befriended hanuman and showing her all the places and she even she knew all the incidents it was like a recap for her because hanuman had already um, made her aware of all the happenings and on the recommendation of sita even the vanara wives were allowed to accompany they were taken along that is why sita nari janasyasya yo yogakshemam vidamiham this shows the compassionate heart of the goddess who is the personification of mahalakshmi herself when the car proceeded further pampa could be viewed with her wild and echoing shore then came the woods of janasthana where jatayu had fought and bled there he attained moksha or salvation and followed by a gloomy godavari finally when they neared ayodhya rama exclaimed in all joy ha sita look ayodhya has arrived we are nearing ayodhya looms above all our weary toils have ended then the vanaras heard rama exclaiming they started jumping they started capering leaping to have a birds eye view of ayodhya knowing that bharata is all set to give up his life if he finds that rama is not arriving on time even if there is delay in few minutes bharata is not going to be alive knowing this knowing bharata's resolve rama had sent hanuman to convey this good news that he is arriving and after visiting bharadwaja ashrama the aircraft alighted at ayodhya on seeing the aircraft landing bharata was longing to see his long lost elders grace mounted on the aircraft and on seeing him rama clasped him in a brother's dear embrace after greeting both the rakshasa chief and the vanara chief and greeting sita lakshmana bharata who was ruling on behalf of rama brought the jeweled sandal which were decked by the royal crown for the past 14 years with the rarest of the gems inlaid and placed them and the feet of rama thus in the city of ayodhya with a restored grandeur and splendor gladness filled the hearts of all early morning after the celestial bath and in the royal attire the king and queen after their very exile proceeded towards the grand assembly of ayodhya now kamban describes the happenings in the royal assembly he says hanuman was not happy with the height at which the throne was placed he thought it should be more raised 
so this idea of supporting the throne struck hanuman and he at once supported the throne held the throne in a very raised level ariyanaye hanuman thanga angadan udai valyenta ariyanaye hanuman thanga ariyanaye hanuman thanga angadan udai valyenta paradan ben kudai kavik iruvaru kavari veesha virai seri kulali vonga vennayur shadayan thangal marabulor kodukka vaangi vasishtan punaindan mauli ariyanaye anuman thanga the throne was supported by hanuman as he felt the height was not enough angadan udai vaal endha angada stood with the royal sword bharata held the chatra bharadan ben kudai kavikka iruvarum kavari veesha the fanning service was done by both lakshmana and shatrughna as they walked into the assembly surrounded by rishis who all have arrived many celestials had arrived they say devargal movargal siddargal muktargal yakshara kinnargal 33 kodi per all the celestials there were variety of instruments that were played and on this auspicious occasion i have already given the description of kambar now i cannot conclude without having kavirayar's ramanataka kriti as kambar is known as kavi chakravarti kavirayar is known for his rama nataka kirtane one cannot go without the other so he describes he names all those who are present there the vanaras the rakshasas the sages the citizens of ayodhya he mentions sakala rajargalum sakala deshargalum sakala vediyarum sakala jadiyar sakala rajargalum sakala deshargalum sakala vediyarum sakala jadiyar sakala matrigalum sakala tantrigalum sakala manidargalum sakala munivargalum chandradi muvargalum indradi devargalum santoshamaya mandu simhasana thirundu makuta vishe gam kondane sita raman makuta bishegam kondane vasishta placed the emperor and his consort on the gemmed and jeweled seat like how his ancestor manu was enthroned in the days of yore so was rama coronated by the vedic lore these great saints great rishis vasishta vamadeva katyayana and kashipa they they are assisting the consecration talking about rama rajya during rama's rule there was no room for pain poverty grief disease or discrimination he set to provide in immediate justice and the poor were never marginalized truth and non violence were the creed that people followed not with out of coercion but out of free moral responsibility and self discipline in vishnu puranam sage parashara accepts that even if given 1000 years to describe this episode of rama getting coronated it is not possible for him to even give the quintessence of this occasion this momentous episode if parashara himself cannot possibly narrate who am i a very primitive mortal out of the enthusiasm that brims at the bottom of your heart i have tried my best to describe this and nevertheless i convey my heartfelt thanks to 
सेंटर ऑफ सॉफ्ट पावर इंडिका एंड प्रे टू दी लॉर्ड टू बेस्टो अस विथ ऑल दैट वी विश फॉर जानकी कंत स्मरणम जय जय राम राम थैंक यू सो मच वर्षा जी इट वाज अ वंडरफुल सेशन एंड दिस ब्रिंग्स अस क्लोज टू टुडेस मॉर्निंग सेशन होप ऑल आवर व्यूअर्स एंजॉयड द चैंटिंग एंड द टॉक बाय श्रीमती विशाखा हरि दिस आफ्टरनून एट 12:00 वी वी हैव नाटका with uh, shri prakash uh, belwadi actor and uh, director as well as a theater personality please do uh, join us at uh, 12 o'clock for nataka thank you so much jai shri ram